So yeah, I was just doing the intro, DJ Smokey, Pablo, welcome to Slovenia, welcome to Radio Student. Thanks for having us. What's up? Uh, so, um, I saw that it's your first time performing in Europe. Yes, it is. Is it like the first time ever in Europe? Yep, my first European show tonight. Okay, and uh, you've been like uh, visiting tourist uh, style in Europe before? Yeah, no, um, yeah, when I was young I came out. Uh, my aunt lives in Australia mm -hmm. and I was like, I was very, I was young though. And I went with like, it was a family trip, fam jam. So <laughs> yeah, no, but I haven't been out here on any, besides that, I haven't been out here before. So mm. it's exciting. And you're staying for how long? Like, uh, my uh, Pablo knows all the exact numbers, but we're three weeks. Three we're, weeks. we're leaving, we're going back on the 2nd of May, Okay. but we're going to France and going to Germany. Cool. Also, so. So yeah, uh, <coughs> you both guys are from Hamilton. Uh, yeah. 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 So is there like, uh, what's the vibe like in Hamilton? Is there like a scene or uh, whatever? Like for the type of music, like for the music that I do, no. It's like, uh, it's the scene out there is really uh, mainstream. You feel me? Like it's just like Drake and it's like it's like clubbing, like regular type of clubbing stuff. It's not like a big underground scene out there. You, for for um, the type of music we do, we got to go to Montreal, do shows, and in the states and stuff like that. The Toronto, for sure too, yeah. the the scene where yeah in Toronto a bit, but uh yeah the scene in uh, my city it's like just laid back Canadian. You know what I mean? It's not there, like there is like there is like a lot of like um like like uh, what's it called gear like the techno electronic producers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that use, type. They of use stuff. a lot of gear, no computers type stuff. Yeah. There's a thing called uh, I forget what they're called. But they're like a little collective, and they're more so like that indie electronic kind of sound more like folk and stuff but there are a lot of like house and techno djs okay. a lot of them not play. the stuff we not the not stuff, the stuff I do. we do yeah, that's okay. pretty much what we're trying to say though yeah yeah so hamilton's chill oh it's a lot of uh pot smoking out there there's <laughs> like there's like uh i'd say like it's probably the easiest place on earth to get weed right now because it's like in the past year it's like 50 over 50 dispensaries have opened yeah mm -hmm. crazy actually and uh it's not like legal out there technically but it te it, it is basically oh, you can okay. go anywhere so it's like a lot of pot smoking and chilling yeah actually. and it's cold right now so not going outside <laughs> <laughs> yeah so and then uh montreal versus toronto you'll definitely say montreal or yeah montreal yeah, is montreal the sure. sh it's dope you can't can you not swear in here i don't know but yeah, uh, you can, you can. okay yeah montreal is uh dope as hell it's like a lot more uh they're a lot into like they're in a different scenes out there like in toronto and and hamilton especially it's just like techno music house music you know that type of stuff but uh yeah you can they 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 like uh they like uh more underground stuff out there i guess it's dope the mm. different stuff for sure. Montreal's got like crazy after parties like I remember went there and there's they're going till like 9 a.m. with the after parties and shit after party after after party you feel me it's crazy out okay. there okay yeah so uh, what are like the the substances of preference there if they Montreal like, yeah if they party like all the time cocaine uppers <laughs> I don't know like uh, molly and shit like that uh, yeah a lot of cocaine I'm not really into that Ottawa. stuff yeah, yeah it's yeah. like right next to each other so okay. like yeah. Yeah, I'm more of a. I like to chill, so I smoke weed and chill. Yeah, yeah. we just we just go out there and get drunk. Yeah, and yeah. Smoke spot. But uh, yeah, it's uh, a lot of partying, you know. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, this one of the rare interviews that you did with this uh, basement guys or what's what are they called? Yeah, yeah, yeah those are my Toronto, boys from yeah. Toronto. Okay. So yeah, I saw you said like that when you got first like really into production, you were using like uh, FL Studio. Yeah. Are you still using it? Yeah. I love that whole studio. It's fun. It's the best. <laughs> it's easy to use, you know. For what I do with the sampling, it's like it's the best program for me. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I just stick with it. Try to be the best at FL. <laughs> <laughs> Try to be better than everyone else. Yeah. And um, like, uh, I would say that uh, Evil Waste was kind of the the breaking point when you really got out there. Like. Uh, yeah, a lot of people like rock with that album. Yeah. So. Do you have like an idea or a theory why like so this was i don't know 2012 or 2013 uh like a lot of this kind of music was made in in those years why did evil ways why did this stood up that much like um i'll say what what caused the whole album to happen like um so basically i was in university i was in 
I was finishing off first year, and I remember putting some music on YouTube. This is how I started, really. And uh, I didn't do it out of, like, trying to... I just did it for fun, you know what I mean? I had I was making beats on FL, and I, I was... Uh, at that time, I was listening to a lot of Lil Ugly Mane, his first album, you know, uh, what was that? Mr. Thug Isolation. Mm. And I was listening to, like... Uh, I was listening to that first ASAP mob tape, um, and uh, Space Goes Perps music. This is like a 2011 or something, mm. and all that stuff kind of inspired me at the same time. And I was like, I want to make some kind of uh, like Memphis sounding, you know, like old school kind of sounding Three Six Mafia, all that sounding stuff. But I want to put my own spin on it. And um, let me think. Uh, so basically, I was in second year university. And I started doing this music stuff. I was selling a lot of weed and shit at the time. On the, on the, in the Chris, Christmas that, I can't remember, I think it was 2012, Christmas. I, like two days after Christmas, I got busted for a ton of weed in a drive, in a ride program. Mm. And uh, basically, it screwed me over really bad. I had to, and I, I got in this like make or break mode where I was like, cause I, I was about, I was gonna like, uh, there was a very good chance I was gonna get a criminal record and all that, wasn't gonna be able to leave the country anymore. It was scaring the shit out of me, so I was like, I was, it put me in this make or break mode where I was like, I'm just gonna make this album, I got nothing to lay back on, you know what I mean? I was in school, I started just caring less about school, and that's eventually why I dropped out, because the music stuff was, I just cared about it more, and I didn't care about school. And uh, so basically, Evil Ways, um, I made that album when I was like, I was um, going through all that court crap like I, I hadn't uh, figured out that I, I eventually got diversion so that means you don't have a criminal record you can travel out of the country and stuff but I didn't know that I, I, I figured that out in the summer so making that whole album I was like scared shitless that I was gonna get a criminal record I was it was make or break mode so um and then all that stuff inspired me like ASAP Rocky Little Ugly Mane uh Space Goes Perp that music like they were bringing back that 3-6 sound and I was like man I really just it all came together you know like mm. puzzles type thing so I don't know, it just, it just happened, and then people loved it, you know? And then, uh, you know Xavier Wolf? Yeah, sure. Uh, I started working with him, he saw my stuff on YouTube really early on, we talked through YouTube, and uh, he, uh, I sent him a bunch of beats, and he used like two of them or whatever, but then a bunch of them didn't get used, and then I threw those beats on Evil Ways, Okay. and people just liked, liked this, what, I, what it was, so, you know? So now it's, uh, Evil Ways, it's like a trilogy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, are you gonna make another one, or is it like trilogy? That's it. Uh, You're probably, of yeah, probably uh, leave it at that for now. I don't know. If I really am inspired, I'll do it, but I don't think so. I'm gonna leave it at that. Mm -hmm. And so chapter, close the chapter. Yeah. Yeah. And for this, like, uh, for this older um, Texas and uh, like Houston, Memphis kind of uh, productions, like the '90s stuff. Yeah. You were like. Uh, Digging through YouTube or uh, how do you, yeah. you find it? Yeah, I think a lot of people do that. Yeah. Uh, YouTube digging. <laughs> yeah. Just go through. Um, the problem with that is you eventually uh, just get in a loop and the yeah, same yeah. stuff keeps getting recommended because it's all an algorithm on YouTube or whatever. So we jumped into uh, sampling off records a couple years ago because it's uh, a lot more random. You feel me? It's more you get, fun too. And you get, yeah, just way more stuff out there. YouTube, you get you can only get so much. But I did. A lot of my producing has been YouTube MP3. You feel me? You mm. know that website? You can convert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take the YouTube video, get the file real quick. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I saw on the um, on the Positive Squad uh, Adventures video. I saw that yeah, you picked up some vinyl. Yeah. Uh, sampling that. So you do you do like real like digging? You do you go to rec? I don't know. You come to Ljubljana, you go to a record shop, or you go to oh, yeah. Van yeah. Vancouver, you go to a record yeah, shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everywhere we touched them. When we went to Portland last year. We came back with tons of records. It was, and we went to San Fran. We came back with tons of records. Yeah, we're into that. And we're doing the same thing on this trip. Yeah, we're gonna we're going record hunting as much as we can. And uh, are you like uh, the other room over there had a bunch of records? Yeah, that it's, was, it's like, a really yeah, good. Uh, that's a wicked room. Yeah. Digging through that. <laughs> um, and uh, are you like um, looking for some? Um, I don't know. Are you like into some psych '60s stuff at the, at the moment, or are you into '80s uh, something or? Uh, it, it, I don't know. It sometimes you hit a, you hit a lick like they say, and you, you find a bunch of samples. But uh, 
I'm just into what sounds, what makes a good song. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've gone through periods like where I've sampled tons of Indian music and stuff like that, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just whatever. I look for whatever I can sample. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. So, what about this new um, alter ego? I mean, not completely new, but uh, so uh, okay. Kirby Main. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, could could you say a few words how the, how did that come about? Uh. Um, that's just like, uh, that's like, um, the evil ways version of me. You feel me? Mm -hmm. When I want to do some little, when I want to get on my, uh, my childish shit and, uh, my youthful, just do, have fun. That's, that's Kirby, man. DJ Smokey's more professional. <laughs> so that's all I can really say. Kirby, man, he's, a. Uh, He's not here right now, but he's a he's a great he's a, he's a bit more turned up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then uh, there's this voice uh, that's present in lots of your uh, projects. Yeah. Let me tell you something, brother. Yeah. Kirby main triple six. Oh, did. So did you yeah. like uh, I don't know hire like uh, some news anchor or radio yeah. presenter or something to do the, all this shit or? Pretty much. Uh, the guy the guy who did those was the guy the trapaholics guy. You know mm -hmm. the guy who did like real trap shit all those drops and yeah, yeah, yeah. trapaholics like i found that guy i found that guy uh i found that guy through a, an interview he did an interview on like noisy or some shit mm -hmm. like that and uh his email was in the interview i emailed him uh, that's it you know cool. gave him some money that's it <laughs> Done deal. yeah he's cool i just got some new drops from him like last week for cool. this tour and shit so he's a cool guy he he's like uh He's into like bodybuilding and shit. He he does a lot of yeah. He, I'm pretty sure, and he does a lot of uh, radio stuff, from what I know, from what I heard. Cool. And uh, if we talk about the tour and uh, your live stuff, um, so you play only your your own production. Yeah, yeah. I'll throw in some some songs I like, like that. Uh, like fellow producers, like like shout out to Working on Dying, guys like that. Um, if I really like the stuff. I'll throw a couple of songs in, but mostly with my shows, since I have so much music, I just play my own stuff and yeah, that's about it. Yeah, like just my stuff. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, in the beginning, like there was just really lots of DJ Smokey productions, like for a few years, but like for the last couple of two or three years, like the video side of things has been like growing strong. Mm -hmm. and I think most of the stuff is done by you. If I yeah, yeah, everything yeah. is done by him. Everything, like for sure, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Shooting a lot of stuff. Well, in the beginning, we had a, a guy from our local city that we worked with, and then I was working on an edit for like a live stream. Like these kind of like visuals for like a live stream and stuff, and then he saw it when he walked in when I was making it. He's like, "Hey, turn that into a music video." And I was like, "All right, let's do it." Yeah. And then uh, it just worked out well. People. He liked used to it. do it in like uh, high school, like yeah, just for yeah. fun, like you know, like you Actually, can take those classes and and even before that, I think. Man, like even like before that, we would skate. You would make super early beats on Audacity. And yeah, then yeah. I, and we'd film that and put that together, put that on Facebook. That was like the we were always into that type of stuff. Yeah, but yeah. like I, I don't know, it was just a point where I was like, I was seeing all the visual. I was like, there, we need to have a visual side to this. We need to push our yeah, YouTube. And I was like, it's important too. I was like, Pablo, let's get on that. And yeah, I knew he's good at it. Yeah. So and now, now you see how important like visuals are in music. It's like more important than it ever. It's like almost ever been. Yeah. For it's, sure. it's kind of like coming back. Like when we were growing up, there were really cool videos on TV. And then they kind of, I don't know, rap videos on the internet for a while. They were got lazy. Like, yeah, 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 very lazy. And now they're like, it's really banging. And mm -hmm. they can really, really interesting. Yeah, shout out to Cole Bennett. He goes hard. Yeah, yeah. Dudes like that. Yeah, bring it back, yeah. And so there's like, like through these videos, I think that you kind of develop your own aesthetics or even a genre. Like, course, usually yeah. it's like you do, doing some crazy shit or just walking around or chilling or whatever and with then some psychedelic special cgi effects yeah, and shit yeah. like that yeah, oh yeah he's good with that and, uh, and uh, then i saw that even like that kind of i'm not sh sure if you started it but like that people are like getting like into your style and trying it mm -hmm. and, uh, i think he influenced a lot of people yeah. I, I definitely like, I, I don't really speak on it too much because it doesn't bother me it's kind of, it happened to him with his music yeah, yeah. so it's like it's people whatever get influenced you know yeah people get influenced but it i became... definitely see like certain tricks i've done in a lot of videos yeah which is which is fine I, I'm there's, actually a, there's a little like i think with the like just like with the scene with the music scene there's like a little scene with the videos too yeah, so yeah. i mean like all these videographers and they're trying to yeah they're push like, this like kind of yeah, cloud yeah 
rap vision or whatever you feel me yeah mm -hmm. like uh this guy on twitter internet hippie and he pushes the videographers maybe not as much as the Shout artists, out internet more hippie. than like anyone else would on twitter and People's like art. yeah it's awesome man. Uh, I respect that. It's, it's good that they sh they shine some light on them, because mm. a lot of these videos, you look at the credits and like some 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 artists won't even like. Yeah, won't even credit. Them, won't even yeah. credit them. I'm like, dude, yeah. it takes a lot of work. You don't even realize. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool. It's whatever. I'm glad they're getting the. Some the people credit. are getting paid for that. Though. That's probably why. I yeah, like. I get that. Yeah, if they're getting paid good money, that's fine. Yeah. But I still want credit. You know. Yeah, we do it for we do it because we love to do it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We need to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything else, man. No, yeah. I'm just <laughs> I need to do this, though, for real. And uh, what about the covers? Because the covers also have like this strong identity. Uh, like there are this. Uh, first there were the collages, then the illustrations. It's this weird mix of I don't know this no limits aesthetics mixed yeah. again with some psychedelic shit again. I've worked with a lot of like random artists over the years. I always mm. look for someone. Like, when I rock with someone, I usually stay working with them. I don't go from person to person. Right now, I'm working with this guy named DMO v VDO. DMO VDO. At DMO VDO, Instagram. He has a... He has a... He's got sick covers. He, like, he just got a... His, uh, his type of... His art fits the style really well. And it's, like, gives it kind of a gummy feel. Cool, like, you know, cartoony. It's dope. That I like it. shaded look. Yeah. It's chill. But um, yeah, I've worked with lots of artists over the years. Okay. So. And uh, you're an uh, independent artist, of course. Yes. And uh, have you ever been like approached by some, I don't know, some distribution? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a guy in LA trying to. I've had people do stuff like that. I've had uh, people try to sign me, but I'm not. Unless it's uh, like. Unless it's a. Uh, Unless it's like a good deal, I'm not doing it. You feel me? Like, I, uh, I've had propositions, but nothing good enough for me to want to sign it. Mm -hmm. So, so the, when you get you get a proposition, do you get like into the details, or do you like smell it? I feel the guy out. Yeah, yeah. That's what I did last time, and I didn't like who I was dealing with, so I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. You feel me? When it when it when uh the right person comes along and I I I vibrate with him maybe, but not yet, you know. A lot of people are out there just to take your what you're doing and fill their pockets. They don't want they don't yeah. want to give you the money. <laughs> I'm not trying to do that. So, yeah. And uh, how how does it happen that like an independent artist yourself um, gets to work with I don't know somebody from Raider Clan or somebody from or with the uh, like ASAP Mob took one of your beats for yeah. one of their mixtapes. So. How does this happen if you're not like if you don't have like oh, okay. a crew that works for you and um, pushes your uh, nowadays i think it's like i think that uh a lot of these producers are getting screwed over in a way too because they're just getting beats taken and stuff but uh yeah it's like um if you're a producer these days you don't need you can just send somebody a bunch of beats and you can you can get like beats out to people you know what i mean like um let me think um so it was all luck really like it wasn't it wasn't like uh i meant to go to this rapper and that rapper it was just like i put beats out there um i remember at the time like when i first put out beats eth wolf and chris travis they were like coming up they weren't like huge rappers yeah, at the time they were just sure. like no name people and uh, i worked with them so i just some of the people i worked with have gotten way bigger over the years you know what mm -hmm. i mean like an example of that would be like young lean like yeah. i worked with him and he popped off so like it's really just having an eye for who to work with and who you who, like uh, I really I remember sad boys when I when they first came out when they first hit the scene I was like I got to work with every producer in there just because they're they're dope I, I knew there's something good about them so I worked with young Sherman I worked with young good with young lean so it's like I don't know man if you see something in before and it, uh, if you're lucky if you see it before other people see it you know what I mean you got to jump on that yeah, for real. that's what I did so and I was lucky because I make beats so I had something to offer so it was all it's all just luck and like the internet helps so much you feel yeah, me of course. and if you have the right product like if if you're making what they want to rap on I guess I don't know it's just a lot of uh well the thing about it ASAP was um let me think about ASAP. Yams was a good guy. ASAP Yams, R.I.P. Yeah. He was a good dude. He, um, he, 
he like hit me uh, okay well basically uh, there's another producer i was working with a lot a lot at the time curtis heron uh his old name was savage beats mm -hmm. he, he makes a lot of beats for like team sesh bones those type of guys anyway so we worked a lot in the early days and he got i remember asap yams he said he was talking to him or something like i don't remember what why it came up and then i noticed asap yams was following me on on uh twitter and that's how most of this stuff happens just like you know someone's following you you just hit them in the dms yeah, yeah. just it, send shit back and forth it's super easy these days so he like was really cool he's like yo i love your music and stuff and um that's why i think i got on the the why uh, my beat was on the that asap friends album because uh yams like picked out the beat like the beats that i sent were picked out by yams and that album was dedicated to yams so it's like kind of like you know yeah like, so it's, salute to yams yeah, yeah. he's a good a and r man he was a good dude so mm. cool okay so last question i got some inside info that you're going maybe to bled tomorrow to shoot some videos maybe or oh yeah <laughs> eat some uh yes Cream schnitta, the the thing that you eat there. <laughs> oh, okay. That sounds, oh, yeah. that sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> okay, thanks, guys, for taking your time. Have a great show. Yeah, yeah shout out to Slovenia. We're uh, we're rocking with you right now. Yeah, Slovenia is awesome. Thank you, radio student. If awesome you see stuff. me in the street, come say hi. Yeah. <laughs>